Welcome to the FA Football Forum. This podcast episode was from a series delivered back in 2020 to help support grassroots clubs and leagues. This was delivered on a webinar platform and therefore may not make too much sense unless you've got the documentation to hand, all of which is available within the description below. With this being delivered during lockdown, sometimes the audio quality may differ. Please bear that in mind. But as always, if you've got any questions or you've got any inquiries in particular to this episode or any other episode, please reach out to us by emailing clubsprogram at the fa.com. So hopefully you are all here for the um, how to use social media effectively webinar. Um, if for whatever reason this isn't the webinar that you are intending to sit on, again, you're more than welcome, as you always are, to, to sit through. Um, and if it's not for you uh, and you want to go and catch up on Cory, uh, I won't put, put that against you. Um, but just as an introduction, introduce myself for those that haven't been on the webinar. My name is Danielle. I am the FA National Clubs Services Manager. Um, so my role looks at the ways in which we can support grassroots clubs, whether it be through upskilling, uh, similar to concept like this evening. So an opportunity to kind of learn and develop um, across the board to look at what types of professional services you might need to support your club um, moving forward um, to, to continue to grow, develop, strive and, and hopefully sustain, um, which is obviously a key element for all clubs. Um, but definitely a key element, element in the, the current environment we find ourselves in. I'm joined this evening um, by Charlotte Richardson, who is one of our FA Club consultants. So Charlotte delivered last week's webinar, so she's done a great job at pulling the content together. Um, and more importantly, she uh, she's kept a, a good traction and momentum going, which is why we've got such a good uptake. So great to have Charlotte back on with us um, this evening. So that's a little bit of a welcome. Again, just to reiterate that the housekeeping kind of rules, um, I say rules, they're not really rules, but it just helps everyone really. So again, just make sure that your microphone has been muted. It sounds like everyone has, which is brilliant. Um, the recording, uh, the webinar, sorry, is being recorded as I currently speak. So it will be shared with you directly after this event. Many county FAs now are using this opportunity to upload the content to their social media platforms, their YouTube channels. So if for whatever reason you struggle with the download links that are shared with you, there are other opportunities to access the information. Again, the slides will be emailed to yourselves. Any questions, pop them through the chat. Um, I'm gonna take a back seat this evening and Charlotte's gonna lead the content um, along with one of our special guests. So I will be across the chat function. So please do drop any comments in there and bear with me if I uh, take a little bit of time to get through them. They're not the easiest to kind of scroll through at times, especially if there is a lot of questions coming in. Um, and we'll keep questions to the end just so the content can flow um, and Charlotte and uh, our guests can continue their flow as well, more importantly. So I just want to do a quick recap, really. We, like I say, on our, our fifth webinar, so quite a new concept, although webinars and, and this type of education isn't new, um, but definitely seems to be something that a lot of companies, organisations are doing. But we have delivered four workshops to date, one around what would we stand, stand for, so looking at values and vision, um, one around how do you know you've made it, so looking at success and what that might mean to you and your club or your league or your organisation. Um, business content continuity planning so looking at kind of where we currently find ourselves today and and hopefully helping clubs and leagues plan for the future or at least be better prepared for the future and last week's webinar um, all around kind of build, using marketing to build for the future so if any of them are of interest to yourselves and you didn't quite catch them please don't hesitate to drop um, myself an email through the clubs program at the fa.com where i'll be able to share the relevant content with you and obviously it's really, really important just to recap some of Charlotte's top tips from last week because it leads on exceptionally well to this week's webinar is if we planned it. Um, but Charlotte's top five tips from how to use marketing to build for the future can be seen below. So I'm not going to read through them. Um, let you cast, cast your eyes over them. And like I say, more importantly, if you do want to kind of recap on that webinar that Charlotte um, and Jeff from at Bromley FC covered last week, please do get in contact and I will share the details with you. 
So what we will cover today, um, looking at how to be more strategic with social media, how to be more consistent with posting. It's one of the things where the social media platforms are fantastic, but actually how do you kind of continually, regularly communicate, maybe without always having to be um, at your phone or at your laptop, how to create good content um, and also a good tone of voice uh, and how to engage people with your club social media. So another really key element and you're probably seeing a lot more of that now where people have maybe got you time, um, but hopefully are connecting with one another as well to, to keep everyone going and ticking along. So really important, just um, last slide from me before I introduce Charlotte. Um, everything that Charlotte obviously shares this evening um, and I guess Warren shares is obviously all really importantly underpinned by our safeguarding here at the FA. So please do take um, all of the content that is shared and um, shared with yourselves um, and make sure that what you're doing and delivering um, ultimately falls in line with the safeguarding guidances that are out there from the FA. So there's a whole host there. Again, we'll share them directly with you after the webinar. There's been some newly updated resources, especially around where we currently find ourselves in um, lots of digital um, platforms, social media platforms, lots of ways where our young kind of people are, are using these platforms. So we just need to make sure obviously everything you do and the information you take away from this evening is obviously all importantly underpinned by the safeguarding guidance that we have obviously got there for yourselves. So Charlotte, hopefully you're on the line. I did check before I started the call. Um, if you could unmute yourself, that would be amazing. And I'll let you um, take the lead. Yeah, thank you so much, Danielle. And um, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining um, the second in a series of marketing webinars from the FA. My name is Charlotte Richardson, and I am delighted to be leading another session following on, as Danielle said, from last Thursdays about using marketing to build for the future. And whilst our first webinar was based around the principles of marketing and a guide to key marketing tools, over the next hour, I'll be building upon many of those themes we spoke about, but delving into more detail around the specifics on social media and how the platform can help you, whether you're tuned in this evening on behalf of a club, league or an academy. Now, before we get going, I'd like to take the opportunity to just tell you a little bit more about myself and um, my background in marketing and experience working in football. I'm a childhood marketeer who has been involved with the game for pretty much as long as I can remember, um, from playing to filling in team sheets and doing all the paperwork as a club secretary to even washing kit and um, picking up my, my whistle to do a, a referee's course. And like most of you, I've spent countless hours volunteering in football and still do in various capacities. I'm a trustee at the Kent Football Association's pioneering football foundation. I sit on a youth league committee and set up a charitable project called Eighth Wonder, which is all about generating um, football's future female leaders. In terms of my professional career, I've been really fortunate enough to work in football for the past seven years. I've worked at a county FA, within the pro game and the non-league pyramid, and across men's, women's and youth football. So hopefully throughout this webinar, you'll see lots of different examples um, and, and the benefit, I suppose, of that experience to take away some best practice some fresh ideas and some new tools to help you get the best out of social media. And when delivering this webinar, I think it's important to know that I am really aware of the fact that we've got a fantastic variety of volunteers tuned in this evening and you'll all be tuned in from a whole host of different types of organisations. So there will inevitably be a mixture in experience in terms of where you're at with your development and management of social media, but ultimately, no matter where you're currently positioned, by the end of this webinar, I really hope you'll go away with a more strategic outlook of social media, a better understanding of how sophisticated a platform it can be, plus some valuable tips on how to get it to perform the way you want, all while saving you and your volunteers some time as well. And as you can see on the screen, I have got a very special guest um, this evening as well. And like Jeff, we all like a little bit of silverware in our profile pictures, which is no bad thing, I think. But um, I, I think it's really important, and it's certainly valuable last week, and it will be very valuable again this evening, to combine the tips that I give you with practical examples of how it can be done. So having Warren Barlow from the Bolton Ferry and District Football League joining me um, is fantastic. And Warren will introduce himself properly later on and guide you through the journey his league undertook when introducing a social media strategy 
um, and the beneficial results they have enjoyed subsequently. And again, at this point, I think it's pertinent to say that when it comes to social media and marketing within football, and especially the grassroots game, I am aware of how much time volunteers give. And the tip I'd like to get across now is a point that I made last week as well, that with the right amount of resource, focus and teamwork, when marketing and communications is done right, and when social media is done right, it provides solutions rather than challenges. And effective use of social media will aid your football organisation um, with its development and achieve your aspirations, whatever shape or form they might take. And these are unsettling times for the football community, and we're now leaning on the digital tools accessible to us, most notably social media, to bring that sense of community we all cherish and we're all really missing right now online remotely. And over the past couple of months, I think we've arguably seen the best social media has to offer. And maybe this time without football can be utilised by us to pause and reflect, do some planning, look ahead to the future and what kind of role social media can play at the organisations we're a part of. Danielle, if I can have the next slide, please. So, yeah, let's delve straight into it. I think it's important at the start to explain how important strategy is when it comes to social media. Our first personal interactions with social media were probably quite informal. We might have joined Facebook or set up an Instagram account with the purpose of connecting with friends, sharing photos from holidays and so on. But with time, as social media channels have evolved and usage increased, no doubt your interactions and your engagement and navigation around those social media sites has become slightly um, more sophisticated. It's highly likely, whether you noticed it or not, that they even began to form most of your consumer decisions, influence your purchasing habits and so on. The fact that across 5.2.2 million adults in the UK, two thirds say that they use social media at least once a day, offers a huge and enticing audience for us to try to connect with. And equally with the average adult in the UK spending two hours um, each day scrolling, which is a quite scary 468 hours per year, it is clear why it is important to treat social media with a little bit more structure. Social media is a powerful marketing tool, one of the most powerful because it's free, it's extremely accessible, and it proves a means of engaging with different groups of people. Danny, if I could have the next slide, please, which um, just illustrates the kind of mix and blend. As you can see, it's quite a gender balanced um, outlook there and the mix of age groups as well is, is quite interesting. Um, I think everyone dialed in today has probably been involved with some sort of strategy development at their club or league to grow the number of teams, increase the number of players, reach more sign-ups, etc. And I just think when the same thought and foresight is applied to your social media, your digital objectives can feed in and complement the more physical. And as a result, the whole of your club and the whole of your league will move in a, a really positive direction. And if I could have the next slide, Danielle, um, this is a screenshot of the five most popular Facebook posts in 2019. That is across the whole kind of entire um, industries. And I think what is really interesting, and I don't know whether you spot it, but I certainly did, is that they're all around sport. Four out of the five are to do with football, and one is to do with Wimbledon. And I think that, again, just highlights in terms of consumer culture, how much of an online presence sports has now. And it really does transcend what we physically experience at our grounds and at the matches we attend. So when it comes to applying strategic thought to social media, I take you back to the idea of your own social media usage and how it's probably transitioned to quite casual consumption, to becoming quite an influential tool in your social and economic decisions. How many of us check out a restaurant on social media before we actually go and visit? Or if we know we're going to an away game at the weekend, check out the opposition's social media pages for information. And it's because of this um, we have to apply strategic thinking. And social media isn't just a group of platforms. The icons of Facebook, Instagram, TikTok all come flooding to mind when we think of social media. But broken down, it's important to think of the different kinds of social media out there and how you can utilise them. So I've produced this slide to highlight the different considerations and usages, and I've ranked them in order that I personally um, consider most applicable and useful for football. So hopefully it gives you a bit of an overview of the different types of social media there are. So firstly, we have social networks, which are used to connect people with brands online. They are what link your stakeholders with your club or league, 
and they have a whole host of benefits um, like relationship building, lead generation. So for example, if you're looking to get signups um, to increase the number of teams or get more attendees at a Wildcat Center, this can be really, really good. Also really useful for market research and helping with brand awareness because with the rise of mobile internet, social networks have become hubs of most aspects of modern life. So they're probably channels you would want your organization to be on. And secondary to those, I highlight media sharing networks such as Instagram and Snapchat, YouTube and TikTok. These are the type of social media tools used to find and share photos and do live streams and other bits of media online. And they can really help assist you with the things I've outlined there from brand awareness to boosting participation. Moving on to discussion forums, this is a type of social media used to find, discuss and share news and information and opinions and we all have um, love and opinion in football and whilst it might not be at the forefront of your social media strategy, it can be quite useful when you need some market research or you want to do some advertising, certainly quite useful um, when building community, so for example if you we're in need of um, increasing or driving the number of coaches within your club. One of the things I think that's built within the sort of DNA of our coaching culture is the first for knowledge and sharing of best practice. So perhaps if you're a charter standard community club, you could set up a private group for your volunteer coach workforce to share resources, talk about results, etc., in a safe private space. Now I'm sure this is probably done organically on WhatsApp and other which we class as social media too but the golden nugget here is that if it's led and administered by you as a club you're beginning to position yourself as a really innovative and supportive organization who comes up with ideas like this to connect your club together which is obviously so valuable when you want to keep volunteers on board and present that word of mouth it's also really good when it comes to brand advocacy because with the right amount of resource pages like this can boost your reputation online and drive wider engagement without you having to spend a lot of money or a lot of time um, on advertising campaigns. And for this, I think specifically of kind of step two to three clubs who are maybe thinking about how they can entice and build crowds for the future. And finally, bookmarking networks. So for those of you that aren't aware of these, it's a kind of social media which is important when we think about maximizing upon trends. It's used to discover, save, share, and discuss new and trending topics. So as we can see, um, social media is a little bit more complex than we might initially give it credit for, but that doesn't mean we can't apply simple basics to get the most out of it. Danielle, can I have the next slide, please? So it's here it's important to get across one really fundamental point before you embark upon your social media strategy. Yes, social media is probably one of the most valuable marketing tools to you. Channels like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter all offer a means to promote your organization to key groups, but do not feel you need to be on everything if it doesn't suit or match the resource you have at your disposal. My advice is to be astute and be tactical. Less is sometimes more. And the analogy again I like to use is some, in the same way a coach will identify the strengths of their playing squad, he or she will pick the best at their disposal to get the best results. So do the same with your social media. Pick the platforms that work best for you and make sure you're great at them before expanding or adding to your workload. I don't think there's anything worse than downloading the latest app with no idea about how it fits into your long term plans. But you know it's pretty cool when everyone in the team is talking about it on a Sunday morning or at training. But if in a few weeks or months time that page hasn't been updated, it becomes defunct and that is really damaging to your brand. So imagine if you're a first time visitor and that's one of your first interactions, they could find it and think you simply no longer exist because it hasn't been updated for such a long time. So once you've considered those social media platforms and which ones you want to use, here on this um, slide currently, we have some of the top tips. So setting meaningful marketing goals. Now, I'm sure um, you've probably heard of SMART objectives, being specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and time specific about what you'd like to achieve. Be bold, be creative, and use this as a time to link your marketing back to other resources that you have within your club, including your um, development plans and your business document. This means that your strategy is playing an integrated and active part in your oper operations as a football organisation. And track meaningful metrics. Performance and sport go hand in hand. 
And one valuable thing social media channels I've mentioned so far offer is really useful data and figures. From the number of people viewing your profile to um, the reach and number of impressions you gain throughout the season, it can be really eye-opening. So make the most of these and they will help you navigate your strategy from its creation through to its um, implementation. And because you've got these meaningful metrics, don't stop there. Again, another football analogy I like to use is that no manager puts a team out without looking back and assessing how the match has gone. Win, lose or draw, they'll look back and assess those 90 minutes. And I think it's always important to look back and reflect. Um, I think this um, sense of continuous development is, is pretty much organically ingrained within grassroots football. Football is such a unique and powerful sport in this country because of dedicated people like you who sign up for webinars like this to make it the best, most accessible, fun and positive environment it can be. So use the metrics discussed to help you improve for the future. And understanding your audiences is really key because when we give so many hours to our club or our league, we can not quite rightly feel like we know it best. But let me warn against this assumption because it's always proven a little bit dangerous to marketers, including myself. So when it comes to football, harness the volume of data out there so you don't have to assume anymore what works best for your social media. You'll know it. The analytics show you helping ensure you're spending time as constructively as possible, which indirectly means you'll save some time in doing so. And look at the competition. This is quite simply a best bit of practice. If you find there are social media accounts that personally engage and interest you, have a think as to why. There's no harm in following similar accounts to you to gauge what they're doing and interact with it too. This is something that I did at Margate Football Club, who are a club that I um, work for. On our account, I created a private list on our Twitter account. Sorry, I should add that um, specific to Twitter. And on this private list, I added all the teams in our league and the league above it. So rather than my ordinary timeline, which has everyone we follow, this is very specific to do with clubs involved in the league with us. So every now and then I could check in, see what kind of content they were putting out. And it was just a really good way of kind of looking at the competition, gaining ideas and just generally staying ahead of the trend. And I'm going to talk about creating engaging content in far more detail later on. But I think the important premise here is that engaging content shows the World Wide Web who you are as a club, as a league, as an academy, and it helps you attract your target audience to you. If I can have the next slide, please, Danielle. Um, but before we get on to creating um, good content, because good content organically will help you and your social media strategy. But one of the things I do get asked quite frequently is about spending money on social media. And if you have a budget or you've been granted some funding where you've been allocated some ring fence money to spend on marketing, that is great. A little really can go a long way if you, again, apply some strategy. So take into consideration the points I've made around smart objectives, good copy, etc. Here are some tips on how I would advise to do paid social media advertising best. Number one, pick the right platform. Once you've defined your objective, think about the people you're trying to target and what platforms would be best for them to use. If you've got a strong Facebook presence and you want to target a certain gender or age range, you can do this. You can really drill down into the detail and specifics. Alternatively, um, I know this is something, again, quite a lot of clubs have to do, but you might want to appeal to 18-year-olds or 16 to 18-year-olds to join your senior academy or maybe, again, that age range to transition from your youth team into your adult because I know that is a theme within the grassroots game, that kind of drop off. Um, Instagram might be a more viable choice for you there. If you don't consider this before investing your money, I think you'll find that the spend won't give you as great a return of investment than you would have wanted. Using video and imagery, now this is such a key for driving engagement. People tuned in last week will know that it's a point that both Jeff and I really reinforced. Adding imagery or video organically boosts your profile, so it's a complete no-brainer when you're social marketing. And I know it sounds really silly to say this, but do ensure that your imagery matches your copy. If you're promoting a youth tournament and putting some money behind to boost that post, it's pretty useless if it's um, if you use a photo from an adult 11 v 11 game. And trust me, it does happen. I've even seen things targeting um, girls football specifically, and then they use mixed um, football teams to promote it. So again, just a really simple piece of advice there. And do tailor your copy and your spend to your target segments. 
the major perk that social media platforms offer and the reason why so many channels generate millions through advertising each week is the opportunity it presents pages that we run to be specifically um, on the feeds of people that we want to reach. So if you're following the SMART objective, this is the time you really, really get to nail that, that S. You can select a particular gender, you can even nail it down to the geography, the age range, you can pick certain interests. Do this and you'll get real success from relatively small sums. And don't be afraid to split your messages across different market segments. So for example, you might be hosting, if you're a charter standard league, you might be hosting a tournament that you want people to sign up for. You could write two different posts, one targeting youth footballers around sort of um, under 12's age bracket, and you could spend maybe 20 quid boosting that by targeting that kind of age range. And then you might also want to attract um, an under 18s. And then you might do a completely separate post with a different image of an older age group, put 20 quid behind that um, and see how they perform for you. And do measure your return of investment because creating um, that kind of understanding of the benefits it can have is really important. Again, if you're sitting on the boards or if you have to report into committees, like money doesn't grow on trees. So um, I do think it's really important to be able to communicate that. And there are many ways of doing that. When you do spend money online, you will be given analytics and reports on how effectively your um, spending has achieved. But also um, have a little think about maybe creating some social media exclusive coupon codes and offers that will allow you to see the results of the traffic or the signups. So for example, any clubs listening in tonight that have a club shop, this could be really effective. But if your club doesn't do e-commerce, you could also make the codes redeemable offline physically at your grounds. Or again, for those of you that have commercial outlets, for example, you might hire out your clubhouse for events and so on. If you were to do a code of say at the moment, June 2020, get 10% off your booking in 2021, you could see and jot down how many inquiries that's helped you get. So moving on to good content, um, and it's a chunky topic, and I could probably ramble on about it for hours, but it really is quite a personal thing to the club, league, or organisation. But in terms of some content ideas, Danielle, if I could have the next slide, please. Um, it's really good to promote upcoming events involving your football club. So from social gatherings, to trials, to pre-season training sessions, this is often a good source of content to showcase. And it seems hard now, but when um, we do start meeting up again, this will become relevant once more. And you'll see on screen some examples that I've highlighted. You might notice they are quite kid-centric because that's where I'm from. But um, on the left-hand side there, we have Edsley United with a, simple inf um, with a simple graphic that they've used to promote a game. The Kent County Football League doing some really best practice there in terms of tagging their teams in the tweets. That's really good in terms of interaction. It's very, very small, the, the image alongside it, but that's a screenshot of some work I did with Marte in terms of using the events function on the page to promote all types of events, not just first team fixtures, but community led events as well. And finally, Fabisham Strike Force there, really with some eye catching copy attached with an image to promote a football session. And then um, if I can have the next slide, it's really important to share information about your club. Narrative, i.e. using social media to tell the story of your club is a really powerful thing for driving engagement. You can bring your club to life online by making virtual introductions to key personnel, whether that be the chairman, the manager, the club captain. This type of content brings the physical experience online, which is really crucial. An example here, we can see Leighton Orient have filmed some content thanking their season ticket holders. And it's just um, club staff, it's people they don't normally see from behind the scenes recording that message. And alongside there, Brentford have done a really in-depth piece with their manager. Again, just bringing that kind of tone of voice online is so important. And then finally, um, Doncaster Rovers have even created a Twitter account for their mascot to share content and to um, engage people with something a little bit different. If I can have the next slide, I think good content also evolves around showcasing initiatives that you're involved with. And again, that really doesn't have to be the most sophisticated or, you know, complicated of things. If you're doing something for charity during a season or a player within your club has done something brilliant, these topics can be brought, but it's really important to let people know about it. And on this slide, I really hope I've encapsulated that it does not matter 
whether you're a Premier League club or a grassroots club, this can be done. The first is a slide with some video content on Manchester City's LinkedIn page about some charitable work they're doing. So obviously it's really key for them to showcase their CSR, which is their corporate social responsibility. QPR recently have um, done some walk from home challenges to keep people engaged and Glebe, who are a fantastic um, Charter Standard Football Club, have done something really, really similar. Again, connecting people with the football club. The football family is often a hashtag we like to use and these are some great examples no matter what level you're at. And on the next slide, um, announcements are a pretty standard use of social media but um, we all know that social media platforms have well and truly established themselves as news outlets so building the trust of your channels by communicating content about new players coaches ground development cup draws essentially anything that might prove of interest to those involved with your club or followers from outside it. And here's a really great um, graphic that folks doing Victor produced. It's the same post, but three different images alongside. So again, just highlighting how creative you can be. And another good tip when it comes to creating good content when the season um, does resume and we are back to playing in the future is match reports. Now this can be done again in a variety of ways, different levels of creativity. That is the joy of social media. You could be a bit innovative and encourage your followers to submit their own thoughts via emojis, um, which again is fantastic when you want to appeal to younger fans. It is one of the fastest growing languages. And although it's from a different sport, um, O2 Sports have done some really good stuff around this rugby. Um, but make sure you repurpose your, your content to build engagement and offer dialogue. I think Dartford did it really well in the previous um, slide where they had the different links, thereby boosting their traffic. And a really, really simple one here, photos and videos. I shared a stat in last week's webinar that engagement on social media is boosted by up to 70% when an image or a video is posted alongside your copy. And this is because it draws attention to your post in a sea of content that a user comes across on their timeline. If you're able to build a stock base of images from your club to use, that's brilliant. And if you're able to get images including people with all the right correct consent in place, that's even better. It's important to remember also that sometimes it's the simple off the cuff stuff that works equally as well. And as we can see here, Rangers did it with a simple, um, probably scheduled tweet about their pick of the day. And then one example in the bottom left is one that I um, use with the Kent Youth League, trying to promote our Instagram page. In the middle is an example from Chipperfield Corinthians Youth Club. Simply some photo footage recorded on the phone is really, really effective. And finally, on this slide, um, the, the user generated content is something that I go on about so much because it doesn't have to just be you that's putting all the content together. And Leeds United um, utilised the Facebook album function on their page. So they were keeping their academy players busy designing posters for the NHS. So obviously they've got all the parental consent to share these images. They created an album and shared the photos on there. So what a fantastic way to illustrate the diversity within your football club, but also to make your club really feel part of what you're doing. I'm sure all of those academy players were thrilled to feature on Leeds' um, own Facebook page. And then finally, advertising. It's easy to look elsewhere for support around advertising, but don't forget the power of publishing adverts that are specific to your requirements on your own page. Something you might, um, sometimes you might want this to stand out on social media a little bit more. And I would recommend using a platform called Canva. Now that's spelled C-A-N-D-A. -A. It's a great free resource where you can design posts using your own imagery, your own branding, and you can download your designs in the correct dimensions in social media. That touch of professionalism. I should emphasize that Canva allows you to produce the correctly sized graphics posts on specific platforms so obviously the graphic that goes to the Facebook post will be differently sized to the one that you need for Instagram and personally I really dislike seeing an image that's not been formatted properly for the channel it's on and whilst it might take a little bit of time to design it I think that it's worth it and um, especially if you plan on using a graphic consistently throughout the season so for example a news or a news signing graphic I would suggest it's worth the investment on of your time and for those of you who might not want to use Canva and have your own preferred um, design software, um, on the next slide is a note of the dimensions that required. Um, if 
There you go. So again, when Danielle sells this, I appreciate this. The font is probably too small for you to record and too quick. But when this gets sent out to you, you can have a look at those dimensions. And Canva, like I say, is brilliant because it gives you a whole host of different resources to use that look really, really professional. So next slide, please, Danielle. And um, some final considerations when it comes to creating good content. Like I said with the Leeds United example, it doesn't always have to be your content. We all engage with brands and companies we like, whether it be sharing a photo from an experience or leaving some really positive feedback about a product that we like. This user-generated content does some of the hard labor for you. Don't be afraid to share or interact with content users send you. In fact, why not harness it as part of your social media strategy? And offer incentives. We all love free stuff or the occasional giveaway. It's something at your disposal via social media and something you can occasionally do to boost interest. Frequently, social media pages will offer a giveaway based on a random drawing. And to enter the draw, users are asked to share, like, or follow a page. This can create a big ripple effect that more than compensates for the investment of a reward. So why not consider those in your content plans at key times in the season? You could even work with partners and sponsors to craft things to give away, or if you're in a position to do so, utilise things like free match day tickets, kit or vouchers. I do appreciate that some of you might not be in that position, so I'd really focus on partnership collaboration. See if you can call in the support of a sponsor for a cross-promotional campaign. Exposure for both parties for potentially something as simple as the investment in a Nike voucher could be really mutually beneficial. And one thing I think that has always worked really well, and particularly during this COVID-19 crisis, is the organisation of contests, which is especially appealing for younger audiences. But I mean, let's be honest, um, when positioned correctly, it's nice for us older ones to get involved too. And these kind of contents, um, especially again, if you have a real diverse makeup of people in your league and your, your football club, um, can be crafted in a variety of ways. It's all about how creative you're feeling. And again, thinking about that smart objective that you want to reach. And listen to feedback. Take the time to make comments and ask others what they think and always be prepared to take others' ideas on board to drive your social media output. I said last week about adding marketing to the agenda of a committee or team meeting because to be truly successful on social media, you have to reflect the wants and needs of the football community you're serving online. And thank your followers. I think um, you might have seen it on the previous slide with the Kent Youth League or maybe one coming up. It's a really simple tip, but it's always good to recognise and acknowledge your audience. You may even wish to mark moments of growth when you reach targets and follower numbers. This will only enhance the community feel of the work that you're doing. So if we move on to the next slide, please. So for sustainable growth on social media, of course, you need good content, but you need consistency to that content too. Now that doesn't mean creating tons more content when you simply don't have time, but it certainly means making a commitment to try and communicate more consistently. To help this, planning is of course really helpful. So if at the start of the season you can create a social media content plan based around the teams you have, the fixtures you know are scheduled, that is really helpful. But of course there are practical points of this. We don't want to be attached to our mobile devices delivering this content or remain stuck behind our laptops. I appreciate it can be hard and labour intensive to do social media well, especially when it's probably something you only get around to doing in a voluntary capacity when you have the time. So I want to introduce you to some free scheduling services, which will save you hours over the season. First things first, Hootsuite. Now Hootsuite is a social media management dashboard. You can use Hootsuite to manage all of your social networks from one place. There are some really great guides and YouTube videos out there explaining in real detail how it works. But to outline it briefly, um, you can see on the screen there, you can add your social media channels. Um, so from like Twitter to Facebook to LinkedIn, they are all integratable on Hootsuite. And you can add tabs to the dashboard to keep your dashboard organized. Now the tabs are completely customizable, so you can make them up however you want. So for example, you can have a tab for your Twitter account, you could have a geographical location or you could even search some keywords. So, for example, if you were a charter standard um, football club that was setting up your very first girls team, you might want to add um, a tab looking for content around girls football. 
And on your first visit to your dashboard, you'll be prompted to add streams. Now, the types of streams that you'll be able to add depend on the social networking that you choose upon your registration. So, for example, if you decide to get Hootsuite and run your Twitter out of that, you can add streams like your sent tweets, your retweets and your mentions. If um, you then want to add your Facebook page, you can add streams like wall posts, news and your most recent. So again, it's really, really clever the way that Hootsuite offers you that functionality across different social media channels. It's not a one size fits all um, customization, which is really, really good. So with that all in place, you can then begin to publish and schedule your messages. It also has a great function called auto schedule, which decides the time to publish for you based on optimal times of day for your account. So it's so clever, it almost does the analytical research for you. And for those of you um, really advanced on your social media outreach, you can even add apps like YouTube, Tumblr, and MailChimp to it. And if I can have the next slide, Danielle. Um, now, for those of you who really want to use Twitter as a major platform for your social media strategy, TweetDeck is a great resource. TweetDeck offers a more convenient Twitter experience by letting you view multiple timelines on one easy interface. It includes a whole host of advanced features to help you get the most out of Twitter. You can manage multiple Twitter accounts. So again, I know there probably might be a, a few clubs out there that run a senior men's team account and then a specific one for your youth team. You can add these all on um, and you can see them and you can build your dashboard so that you don't have to be constantly clicking on and off and logging in and out. And um, again, which saves a, a great amount of time. And so you can manage your multiple Twitter accounts. You can schedule tweets for posting in the future. And whereas with um, Hootsuite, you've had streams, on TweetDeck, you can customise columns. So as you can see, there is a screenshot of a TweetDeck channel that I use. You pick and choose what columns you want and how they are displayed. So if I can have the next slide, Danielle, this is just a list of the different um, functionalities that TweetDeck offers you. So these are the different columns that you could add to your dashboard. And I've highlighted a couple that I think relate to the points we've made. So again, that's that search term. Really, really good if you introduce a club hashtag or you really want to engage with content in your local community. So for example, if you were a team based in Newcastle, you might want to search the hashtag Newcastle and you can always be kind of keeping on top of content that's related to that. The list function is one that I mentioned to you earlier that I did with Margate. Again, if you're a lead listening in this evening, you might want to set up a private list where you can add every single one of your clubs to. So that way you've got a very refined stream of information that is relevant to you. Because again, I think as a league, it's quite nice when you share your club's content. And this is a really easy way of doing it without having to kind of search through your whole feed. Again, scheduled is really, really important if you want to save some time. Um, as opposed to having to be on social media every night of the week and um, racking up the hours, you might decide, oh, do you know what, every Sunday morning, put the TV on, I'll sit down with my laptop and I'll schedule the important messages I need to do over the next 45 minutes. And then I've highlighted mentions as well, because one of the things I think is really great with social media is striking up a dialogue. So you can see all of the mentions, you can see all the different individual users who interacted with your account and you can decide to reply to them, you can decide to retweet them. But there is, as you can see on this slide, so much to explore with the scheduling platform. So I'd really advise going away and exploring and um, what might work best for you. And finally on this page, if I can have the next slide, is Studio Creator. So this is a recent addition to the world of social media management. It's a free tool you can access. Um, it's linked to your Facebook. So unlike the previous two, this is only specific for Facebook and Instagram accounts. It's, a, like I say, a free tool that you can access to bring together everything you need to effectively post, manage, monetize, and measure content across your Facebook and Instagram accounts specifically. It can also help you take advantage of new features and monetization opportunities that you might be eligible for. Um, I think the way that Facebook has kind of revolutionized advertising over the past few years, if you are a club that has a budget, this could often be a really good source for you. And as you can see on the left-hand side there, and um, I can look at the posts that I've um, played. I can look at the posts that I've scheduled. Underneath it is the insights column. So again, when I was talking about looking at your analytics, that's right underneath you. And Facebook is really good at providing some free advice around how to get the most out of your budget as well. So it's one to definitely consider. One quick point to mention is that anyone who manages a page can use the Creator Studio. 
but the page role determines the specific information you can see and the actions you can take, which for some of you, um, and particularly welfare officers, will be really important because you'll almost have a structure in place about who has the sort of most authority and access to those accounts. So moving on to tone of voice. Now, as highlighted over the past few slides, there are numerous ways to try and stand out on social media. It's a really competitive space out there and every little helps to get a tactical advantage. So I quickly wanted to talk to you about one of the tactics I actually feel gets overlooked and that is tone of voice. I think everyone tuned in this evening will probably feel that their organisation has quite a clear mission. You probably have a good development plan in place and this is all important when building your strategic route to reaching and connecting with your intended audience on social media. All your marketing activities, social media and otherwise, will exhibit your tone of voice both internally and externally. And your tone of voice characterises your club or league personality. Once you've got a clear idea of the tone of voice, you want to start delivering that on social media to communicate your values and influence others to start consuming your messaging. And before drilling into some detail, I think it would be irresponsible of me not to underline that no matter who you're involved with, wherever you may be in the country or whatever level of the pyramid, it's important to use your tone of voice to represent the football organisation in a professional manner. Alongside this, it can help you maintain a degree of interest about your pages and it does allow you to inject some fun um, into what you do. But do be aware when managing an official page that it's not a space for you to share your personal opinions. And I'd certainly be mindful that the things that you do share are monitored and they should comply with FA regulations. So like I said, I think tone of voice is a secret ingredient to successful social media activity. But why? And for me personally, it gels all of the successful traits of good social media marketing together by helping create a connection with your audience and encouraging engagement and dialogue. A friendly attitude makes your community feel comfortable, so they're willing to interact with you more, resulting in more likes, shares and comments on your posts. And this propels culture, which I think we all agree is of paramount importance to us, no matter our footballing background or the organisation we're a part of. And it is a crowded space on social media. So if you get your tone of voice right, it will help build a sense of trust between yourselves and your followers. And I think that's really quite potent right now, um, given the climate that we're in on social media and the way we're consuming our, our news. And I think over the next few years, this sense of digital trust will become an even more valuable currency. It also helps build a memorable, consistent brand image. Not only does language define customer perception or stakeholder perception of your brand, it can increase recognition by 80%. So uniformity oh. in your communications reinforces your core values. And that kind of reinforcing will uplift everything you're trying to do, from player recruitment to attracting commercial partners. So some final tips. Understand your brand, which takes us back to the very first few slides around social media strategy. Once you know the kind of messaging and content you want to share as a club or a league on social media, and how these link back to your values as an organisation, you'll begin to form an idea of the type of language that will communicate that effectively. Not only this, but you'll begin to forge your online community as much as you do your offline. And it's back to that point about understanding your audience. Your stakeholders are, of course, an integral part to your brand as a club or a league, and you wouldn't spend the hours you do providing football for them if that was not the main aim. Your knowledge and understanding of who makes up your audience, whether you're a one or two team club or a massive charter standard community league, is paramount. Let this intuition guide you, but note that your social media audience will not solely consist of those affiliated or signed up to you. It will also include individuals who are interested in the content you develop. And that is the goal if you want your social media channels to attract followers to aid your growth and sustainability. And refine according to channels. So I spoke earlier about picking your channels and doing those well, rather than being on everything and every platform at your disposal. That is because I'm a firm believer that whilst we put the likes of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all into one category of marketing, they are all really different platforms. For optimum success and performance from social media, your copywriting should be adapted for each audience and each platform. Best practice is not to replicate content exactly, as tempting and as time-saving as this may appear. For some of you, you might be happy to copy and paste your content across channels and be present on them all, and I don't criticise that. But what I imagine you probably will find is that eventually you'll hit a rut and the growth of social media becomes a bit stagnant. 
Then you might find the benefits of tailoring your messages to each platform helpful in rejuvenating growth and exposure. Consistency has been a theme throughout this um, and last week's marketing webinar, to be fair. So one of the challenges, of course, we have is the capacity to deliver such consistency. It's advisable to go away and engage volunteers with your social media work and to build a team would be brilliant. But to enable this consistency to be permanent, if you do hand your social media channels over to other volunteers, given how important they are, I would advise jotting down some guidelines which contain clear and practical guidance on how to communicate to complement your position as a football club within the local community. Um, but also it would be really useful for your team and for your dedicated social media staff. And finally, to move on to how to engage um, people with your club's social media channels. This is the, the really good bit. Um, <laughs> with strategy in place and with consistency in your social media comms, good content delivery and a strong tone of voice, people will engage with your social media. It's as close a guarantee as I can give you. Um, however, there are a few more tips to drive that engagement that might give you an additional benefit. Firstly, with any post you publish, irrespective of the platform, it's crucial to tag um, people or other organisations related to that post, particularly those featured in any images. This will attract those accounts to the post. It will enable them to see the value in it and hopefully share it to their own following. Good quality content will nearly always ensure your followers engage by resharing, re retweeting or liking it. And the knock on effect to this is that the post will achieve a much larger reach as it spreads across the timeline of your followers to people who may not necessarily have a connection with your channel presently. So on the left hand side there I've got an example of um, a tweet that I did for the Kent Youth League when we announced our um, sponsor. So you can see in the copy there I've, um, I've included the company and I've included the teams involved but in the yellow box I've tagged in some media outlets because I want them to see this, I want them to engage in it. They're also the people I sent some press releases to, so I'm hoping that they will share that to their followers and help me make my sponsors a little happier. Alongside that is a screenshot from the Kent Youth League's Instagram account, and we have a photo from a match, really great image there. I've tagged the teams involved in that game because they might want to share it, they might want to engage, and that in turn would help the league appeal to its players. And at the Kent Youth League, we don't have a Facebook page because of the sort of safeguarding reservations we had. Um, so I give an example of some work that I did at Margate. We um, had a fantastic partnership with the Libertines and we sold a lot of shirts as a result. And reflecting on that, I tagged their official page into one of our posts, which they shared, which you can imagine just absolutely um, took our reach and took our engagement through the roof because us as a sort of Ishmael League club being able to be shared on a band with hundreds of thousands of page likes was really, really um, helpful. And on to the um, next slide, please. Another bit of um, potentially best practice um, that you might be able to see. Um, now, it's really hard to obviously reflect this on a PowerPoint slide, but sometimes if you were scrolling through Twitter, you'd often see a thread. Threads can be really, really useful. And this is an example of how, again, we did it at the Kent Youth League when promoting a charitable initiative at Christmas time. We put the initial post up and we um, tagged some people in it. And then we would reply to that initial post in a couple of weeks time. So what that then built was a quite nice narrative on the timeline, which meant that we could get more information out there. So that's, again, another little tip that I would use. And then on the next slide are some more examples of social media work that I've done with the Kent Youth League and I spoke about um if I can have the next slide please Danielle thank you um I spoke about um being really open and um celebrating different like, landmarks that you reach as a club there is an example of what a Canva post can look like we're on Instagram really simple sized properly and then again talking about how to use emojis um, as just a bit of fun content for you we have an example of that there and moving on to hashtags a hashtag for those who might not be so sure is effectively a label for content it helps others who are interested in a certain certain topic quickly find content on that same topic and it's really useful if you're looking to build prominence with an already established online community so if you apply this tip to your club or league as an example you were setting up a veterans men's team a recreational session based in Colchester Essex, you could use hashtags such as hashtag Essex, 
hashtag culture star, hashtag bets, football, fitness, and so on, to broaden the post's appeal and expand the reach. So building on that, to be more strategic and relevant to you, why not create a club or league hashtag? For those of you at last week's seminar, Jeff Hutton, the GM at Bromley FC, spoke about the hashtag he created, We Are Bromley. Very simple, but effective. You might well have a slogan or nickname associated with your outfit already. Could that lend itself to becoming your organisational hashtag? Once decided at the start of the season and throughout, promote this to stakeholders, encouraging them to use it and to share content. As you'll see on the next slide, promoting it online is, of course, really important. And it's something that we did at Margate with the hashtag in this together. But don't forget other marketing platforms and assets, including your website, your match day magazine and so on. If I can have the next slide, please, Danielle. I've even seen some clubs ensure that their hashtag is printed on their kit. And there's a reason for that. It's all part of the marketing mix. And there we go. You know, I do um, back up what I say at Margate. We plastered it down the main end of our football stadium. And moving on, um, sharing is caring. And another way to engage people with your page is to share others relevant, others relevant content too. Whilst you spend a lot of time focusing on your posts, make sure you make the most of other people's too. Your league, your county FA, the FA, partners and sponsors will all have some form of social media output. Look out for the posts about potential funding opportunities that you can engage with by liking or sharing and retweeting. As long as it's relevant to your own audience, it can add another dimension to your social media strategy. On the left hand side there, we see an example of a tweet that was compiled um, by someone else. It was written by one of our supporters and we just shared it. And then on the right hand side, some images sent to us by supporters. So don't be afraid to explore your tone of voice and um, thank others for the contribution they make. And talking of thanking others, I'm really delighted now to hand over to Warren Barlow. League Secretary at Bolton Berry and District Football League to tell you what good social media looks like when it's done right from a league and club perspective. Uh, thank you, Thanks, Charlotte. I certainly, uh, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, like uh, Charlotte said, I'm Warren Barlow. Uh, I'm the current uh, Secretary of Bolton Berry and District Football League. I want to give you some uh, practical how we view social media as an organisation. Uh, and I can assure you, we're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, me personally, I've, been, I've had my fingers burnt a couple of times. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just, all I'd say to you now is that we are not perfect. Um, but we uh, find of it, really, really embrace it. Uh, I'm just mindful somebody's saying they're struggling to hear me. Uh, if you can, they can hear me. Danielle. Warren, it's Danielle. Um, it just it seems to be fading just a, uh, out a little bit. So we can hear you at times and it just seems to fade out a little bit. Okay, can you give me two minutes and I'll pull the mic in? Yeah, of course. Yeah, no worries. Just give me two minutes then. No worries, Warren, not a problem. Charlotte, it's probably a really good time if I can uh, re-get you back in. Um, there's been some, some really good conversations um, on the chat function, which is, which is fantastic. Um, people sharing some, some really good um, knowledge, uh, especially around Canva, um, which is great. So thank you very much for sharing that. Um, and I think people have, have answered um, one another's questions within that around kind of resizing, etc., which is obviously great. Um, I mean, April posed a question and she's had some really good feedback, which is brilliant. Um, but it might be worth um, in Warren's absence, Charlotte, just to maybe get your thoughts on it. So, Charlotte, uh, so April, sorry, is asked as a club who uses many different social medias such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc. Would you recommend only one person from the club controlling all accounts? Now, like I say, April's had some really good feedback from everyone else, which is which is valid. But it'd be really good to, to get your thoughts on that, Charlotte. Yeah, I think personally, um, it's particularly if, if you're um, a volunteer, I think it's good to build a team around you because I don't think 
if, if you want to be really effective on social media and have a really good strategy in place, it will require time and there is no sort of way around that. And I think the best practice, it would be good to build a team around you because in the same way you would build a team to perform on the football pitch, that sense of teamwork can be really, really great to help drive your performance on social media. And I think there is ways of obviously having control over that. So in last week's webinar, we spoke about engaging volunteers and, and creating little job descriptions. And, and I say that not to be off put in and, you know, make volunteering sound like a job. But I think being, again, really specific about what role someone is contributing to your football club as a volunteer helps the longevity and how long they want to engage with the football club for. So my personal opinion is that it's really good to build a team and to get multiple people involved because that way collaboration means that you'll have loads more different creative ideas and I think you'll ultimately then see a bit more of um, an impact. So for example, you might have a really good understanding of how Facebook works and actually you might only have the time to dedicate to um, Facebook, but you might have um, a younger member within your club or your league who wants to forge a career in marketing who um, you know, drops you a line and says, oh, can I manage your Instagram channel? And you don't want to say no to that support. And the whole point of all of these webinars is to build up a workforce for a sustainable future. But I think it is important to identify someone from a safeguarding point of view who is going to oversee it. I think that's a, that's a really good point, Charlotte. And um, the, the whole element around encouraging more people to support um, i appreciate this isn't a volunteer topic as such but ultimately um seeing you guys being stretched even more than you already are so if there's an opportunity to share the load um under some type of guidance whether it be a jd like um, charlotte mentioned is obviously a great way to, to just make sure that you as individuals um, or key people within your club aren't taking too much on. And Charlotte, there was a really good example from, from Jeff last week around utilising young people. Um, and I know that the league that, that uh, Bromley play in have, have got a good connection um, with the university, but it's connecting in with, with young people, obviously, um, kind of over the age of 18, so not too young, but making sure we've still got a good um, youthful eye across social media. Do you think that's still a, a really good opportunity to, to engage with that type of audience and, and encourage them to support the use of the social media channels for clubs and leagues? Definitely. I mean, one of the things I really hope that comes across to people tuned in is that your marketing and your social media should reflect you as a football organisation. It shouldn't be, you know, necessarily reflecting you know one element of that so of course opportunity you know that that's what we all believe in football is a vehicle for creating opportunity for everyone and it's plastered at the very front of the presentation you know the fa slogan it's for all and actually you might find and certainly throughout my career and my time volunteering often the people that volunteer might not necessarily be interested in playing themselves but they have a skill base that lends itself perfectly so it is the young people are an obvious um one to turn to just given from one of the earlier slides again how much of the population is weighted um in that younger age bracket but really it's open to everyone and that's what makes it so good and you might actually find that you have older people within your club who want to learn about it and then you can do some really nice work there about connecting people and um, one thing again that's happened quite a lot throughout my career and again my time volunteering is i get a lot of people who want to write match reports um, not necessarily because they want to become journalists, but they just really enjoy it. So that's something that I'm able to take advantage of. I obviously proofread the match report and then I take it and dispense it across social media. Um, but again, I think the premise applies in the same way that, you know, the best football organisations out there will want to offer, to offer opportunities to everyone. And what we're fortunate about with social media is because it's free, we can kind of explore and, and give those opportunities to people that help us. And I think um, I think I think that's absolutely spot on, um, Charlotte, in, in the sense of kind of making these opportunities available for everyone. Obviously, if, if someone's got a keen interest in this area, it's great. And I think uh, Freya's made a good point um, around kind of the consistency of branding. Um, and is there ways where clubs and leagues can ensure that happens, even if the, the social media role is, is maybe split across a few different individuals? Are there kind of 
ways in which that branding can remain consistent? Um, and, and if so, what, what are the top tips? Is it, is it a guidance document? Is it having some, some structures around kind of content where they may be filling the buzzwords related to the message that they're trying to share? Yeah, it would be exactly how I, I spoke about the tone of voice and creating a document like that. And what we tend to use in marketing is something called brand guidelines. And that can quite simply be a one pager, which outlines the colours that you tend to use as a lead. That it can be as detailed as you want. It can cover like the type of font you use, the times of day you want to schedule your posts, the type of language, the do's and don'ts. And again, I think that's really important because when you have a brand and if you're a marketing volunteer or a media volunteer, you are what we call a brand custodian so you have a real duty to protect that brand and um make sure that it, it looks professional and that it looks really good so i would suggest that every football club and um, especially those that are larger and those large scale leagues really investigate having some brand guide up guidelines and i think hopefully as you saw with the kent youth league stuff that's something that we've done you know, we have quite specific brand guidelines. We have a, a colour scheme that we use. We have a very clear and distinct tone of voice. Um, so I think, again, it, and it should be considered just as important as any safeguarding document, really. Um, if you treat it as such um, and make it a prevalent document within your club structure or your league structure, anyone that does get involved can have a read to it and they can refer to it. And then if they have any questions, um, they can come to you. Brilliant. Thanks, Charlotte. That's awesome. Uh, and definitely makes sense, especially to someone that isn't maybe across social media as, as much as I could or should be. Um, probably just a good point uh, or good time just to check in with, with Warren. Um, Warren, are you there? Have you got a mic? How are we doing? Yes, yeah, that sounds Yay, much better. That's better. <laughs> Great stuff. It yeah, wouldn't be a webinar about technology issues, would it? <laughs> <laughs> never had that before, but never mind. Okay. <laughs> Right. Okay. Like, like I said, I'll start again. Thanks very much. Thanks to Charlotte as well for that input, because I certainly learned something and I'm glad you can all hear me now. Anyway, I just want to give people some practical examples, really, from the Bolton and Berry District Football League perspective. And uh, I've got to say, we're not perfect. We've made mistakes. I've personally made mistakes, etc. I just want to give people confidence that really do embrace social media. Don't be frightened of it. OK, uh, it is something to embrace. It's something to enjoy. So uh, there's a bit of an agenda there. You know, I'll give an, an introduction. I'll give an overview of the league, etc. I'm not going to read through everything of that, but that's just to give you a, a, a bit of a flavour of some of the things that I'm actually going to talk about. So if you want to just move to the next slide, then. So who am I? You know, it's, it's all right me talking on here, but the uh, uh, first and foremost, you know, I'm 54 years of age. I've been married for 30 odd years. I've got a son that's a uh, level 2B referee, so football runs in, runs in the blood in the family. Uh, I was 30 years as a police officer. Uh, out of that 30 years, 18 years of it was uh, in counter-terrorism, actually. And I uh, ended up being a national, for some reason, a national and international trainer for counter-terrorism. Uh, and as a result of uh, the training that I delivered, because uh, I went out to places like Tunisia, Uzbekistan, Bosnia, Nigeria, Jamaica. I went to, out to lots of different places delivering counter-terrorism. And I worked out of London for a long period of time, uh, delivering counter-terrorism training uh, for the CT network. Uh, I ended up getting the Queen's Police Medal in 2019 for my services to policing, and in particular, my services to counter-terrorism. But why do I mention that? We, a lot of people have talked about strategy. A lot of people have talked about tactics at the moment. Policing, all the 30 years I've worked in policing, was based on three layers. And I'm going to talk about these three layers in a little bit more detail later in relation to social media. Those three layers are strategic, tactical and operational. The strategic le level would be your senior management, your tactical level would be your middle management to decide how they're going to implement those tactics. And then your operational level is, is your doers, the ones that actually do it. OK, and that is a theme that runs through a lot of what Charlotte was talking about before. OK, other things I am, I'm a level seven uh, referee, a grassroots refer referee. The only reason I ever started refereeing really was in order to, uh, uh, if I'm going to be 
discussing refereeing with young officials, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I want to be able to do it myself. I want of these. I want to be able to experience it myself. Okay, I'm a level one uh, coach. I've coached under fives, under sixes, under sevens. Uh, I've coached all the way up to under 18s. Uh, I've run teams. Uh, I've been involved in football for for a very very long time. Uh, I'm also the club secretary, so I've got some examples in relation to uh, club work. I'm club secretary for a, a club called CMB Sports Club in Bolton. Uh, CMB Sports Club has an adult team. It's got a reserve team. It's got a number of junior teams. It's got it's a wildcat centre, and it's got a number of girls teams there as well. OK, and I'm also, as you can see on the turn, I'm the league secretary for the Bolton and Berry District Football League. Uh, I've had a number of roles in the Bolton and Berry District Football League, a number of roles, and I'll talk about them in a little bit more detail in a minute. But that first slide I put up, it showed uh, four bubbles, I'll call them. Let's call them bubbles. Uh, the top bubble is actually the Northwest Football Trust Registered Charity, uh, which is the strategic level that's the overarching organization that the Bolton and Berry League sits under okay the Bolton very much like any other league in the country it was a standard committee run league until 2015 and in 2015 we decided to set up a registered charity rationale being we could basically have access to funding and other things okay that a charity can access but not necessarily a voluntary run league can access okay uh, the league currently has got 600 teams about 8200 players so you think of the footprint that the league's got to so the number of people that you touch uh, when you post things on social media and such like such like put things on your websites and such like you know you've got 8200 players you're talking 16,000 more parents you're talking actually the the demographic and the and the numbers of people that you're touching on is probably getting to the region of about 50,000 people that potentially you're touching on okay with a league of this size all leagues are different sizes all clubs and organizations are different okay but this is just an example of where it is now the strategic level for the uh, Bolton and Berry District Football League sits with our trustees of the, of the charity. They will set the overarching strategy, they will set the communication strategy, the marketing strategy, the PR strategy, which is quite good actually. It's good for me. I used to be the chairman of the Bolton and Berry League and I stepped down and later became the secretary uh, because the chairmanship sat within the charity and I wanted to be more hands on. Now, we then have a middle management layer, this middle layer that then will set the tactics. Okay, then how are we actually going to write that, uh, those tweets? How are we going to write that uh, uh, that uh, marketing uh, document that's going to be released, etc.? Uh, the management team that sits in the middle, the middle management will set the tactics around that, how we're going to do it. And if anybody follows the Bolton and Berry League on Twitter or Facebook or other uh, uh, products, we'll see that recently we've, uh, distributed quite a bit of information around funding. We've done a lot of information around funding. We've done a lot of information because of the COVID-19 issues. I think we tweeted something like 38 different funding streams that are available for clubs and stuff like that. And that again, all came down from the, the strategy and the, the comms plan that's been set by the organization. Okay. Uh, we've also started to push more things around uh, uh, restarting the season whenever that will be and hopefully it will be it will be soon uh, and again we've been promoting a lot of that and and the coordination of that sending it out what's it going to go on facebook instagram twitter etc which accounts is it going to go on etc was de is decided at, at that middle management level the league itself is like any other league that's just a breakdown of who's involved in the league we've got quite a number of people involved in the league league secretary welfare officer we have somebody who's responsible just the development age group somebody that's responsible for the competitive age group somebody that's responsible for girls and then we have a number of sectorial posts etc uh, uh for the fixtures secretaries and then we have a team of five that run the uh, referees, etc. And I'll talk a little bit in a, in a minute around who posts what on what, because I noticed Chris put a, a question on there around, well, would you have different people, for example, uh, responsible for different uh, 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 Twitter accounts, Facebook accounts, etc. Well, we do, and I'll give you examples in relation to that. Okay. Uh, so if we just move on the slide, please. 
to the to the next slide. This is just give you a breakdown of of our structure and our our, our online footprint. Uh, so at the top, you've got the Northwest Football Trust, which is the charity, and that's the website address for the charity. Okay, sitting under that is the three football elements. One of them is the Bolton Berry District Football League, uh, with with the web address there for it. The other one's the Northwest Girls Football League, which is is trying to focus the messaging all around girls. And then you've got the Northwest uh, Women's Football League, which again trying to uh, focus around women's football. So there's there's four websites there. But if you went on those websites, and I'm, and I, I was mindful of what Charlotte said before that. Uh, uh, you don't want to uh, replicate information, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, we've, you know, and it's come from the trust and the charity, the strategic arm, have decided that certain things will be replicated. So, for example, our news pages. If you go on any of those four websites, you will see that the news pages are identical uh, to each of the four sites. Because if I post something on the Bolton and Berry site, it will actually replicate on the other three. Uh, but there's certain things that don't replicate. So, for example, if you look at those Twitter accounts on the on the left hand side, lower down, you'll see the official BBD FL account, which I'm responsible for, only posts stuff on the Bolton and Berry District Football League website. So it posts it there on the front page, available for people to see, but it only posts there. Now, Kelly, who's responsible for the girls, she's responsible for the official NG. NWG FL, sorry, uh, Twitter account. In the official NWG FL, Northwest Girls Football League Twitter account, actually posts on the Northwest Girls Football League website. So it splits. And this is basically allows us then to target audience and drive girls football, the mixed football, et cetera, et cetera, and send messages to the various sites. But the sites are actually, when you look at the sites, they actually interact with each other and fold over each other. So do the Twitter accounts. And then you can start to generate uh, uh, policy, process, enthusiasm, uh, uh, greater social media activity around the things that are really, really interesting at that time. Clubs supporting uh, the county FAs and, and some of the things that they're driving around safeguarding, et cetera, et cetera. So these are the type of things you can do. We also have Facebook and an Instagram account, which, which are linked together. And I'll touch on the next slide in relation to who's responsible for each of the slide, each of the uh, accounts and stuff like that. So, yeah, this is the next slide. So the strategy. OK, so we talked to, uh, Charlotte talked about setting the strategy. The strategy for us is set by our trustees of our charity. OK. Then we have a, a, a next layer down, which is the management team. The management team consists of of the chairman of the trustees, one of the directors, myself as league secretary, and then area leads. Those area leads are uh, the girls lead and the development football age group lead, etc. So they and they will make up the management team. And that we then decided how we're going to market this. Uh, uh, Restart of the season. We're hoping to start on the 12th of September, fingers crossed. Uh, but uh, also be mindful that we need to drop that back. Then we have uh, a layered approach to everything else. So the main uh, Bolton and Berry District Football League Twitter account is my responsibility. I, anything that comes from that account actually comes from me. The girls account is from the girls lead. Uh, the Facebook page is actually Mark Edgar. Mark Edgar is our development age group lead he's responsible for the under sevens all the way through to under 11s and, and he drives a lot of events that we do we do a lot of events with man city manchester united bolton wanderers in this in the northwest of england and uh, and he drives a lot of these events we also have a referees team like i said and, and, and a specific referees twitter account which uh, jack and ashton they run that twitter account now i said at the beginning of this that i'm 54 Okay, Jack is 19. The good thing about having a mix of people with different age ranges, different demographics, different life experiences, but the one theme and strategy allows for some flexibility around the delivery of the message and stuff like that. And Jack will sometimes tweet stuff and do stuff which I read and go, whoa, but then I actually look at it and the younger audience may prefer that, etc. 
Okay, so it's just a, a few little tips that you may want to consider for your own organization when you are uh, building your own structure. So you, we just move to the next slide, please. Okay, so just really some tips for you, really. What does social media do? Now, when I first joined the Bolton and Berry District Football League, it was actually called the Bolton and Berry District Mini Soccer League. Uh, and that was in uh, 2001, and we had about 110 teams. We have really driven uh, everything that we've done passionately through social media, and through our uh, websites and stuff like that, uh, doing podcasts, doing lots of different things. Uh, I used to uh, do a, a feed in the local paper, a regular input in the local paper, been on the local radio stations, etc. really driving the positive messages. And uh, by doing that, I have no doubt that's had a massive effect on the, on the growth spur of the league. And it's also had a massive effect on things like the play pathway, getting buy-in for 9v9 football, for example, when we went from 7v7 football to, straight to 11v11 and we brought in 9v9, for example. And then the 5v5 football, futsal that's now come to the fore, girls football. A lot of this driving the messages, positive messages, really really does engage with your audience and get them on board with you with with your vision and your views and your opinions and stuff like that uh, so it's really positive it can set the tone of your organization you can really support your teams and clubs that are involved with you uh, but some of them bullet points there it can attract dissenters it can attract abusive people uh, you may get wording wrong and somebody will take it the wrong way what you've what you've posted you know uh you may post something that you shouldn't have you know i, I do remember something getting posted recently that, uh, from one of our accounts who shall remain nameless we said don't post that till tomorrow morning and they posted it that night these things happen mistakes happen and it's how you deal with it we we basically now uh have a uh, a system whereby you know we do, we, we, do, we draw from it. We'll direct them to the league secretary's email address if there's a real issue, and we'll withdraw from it. But a big tip from 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 me to you that I've learned over the years, because I used to be the person that would react when a coach has abused a young referee, for example, on the pitch, and they posted it on their Twitter account that the referee was rubbish even though I've spoken to that referee's parent who was only 15 years of age, very upset about the way he's been treated, et cetera, and we're trying to help that referee. And we've been there when they're posting rubbish on social media about that person. And I've bitten in the past and I've bitten and I've uh, uh, interacted with that person. That was so wrong of me and it, it was unprofessional for the organisation. It was unprofessional for me. Okay, a massive tip from me is utilize mute okay within twitter within facebook there's a mute option i used to get really annoyed with these people and eventually block them blocking doesn't help blocking just creates more of a problem if they're a member of your league or your organization or they're another club blocking them causes more of an issue so what they do then they'll screenshot that you block them they'll then circulate it with their friends and, and it basically snowballs so I suggest don't block them, mute them. Muting is very, very good. Okay, I know I enjoy social. I went through a period where I didn't enjoy social media. I enjoy social media now. And muting has gone a long way to helping me do that. Okay, so that's just a, a big tip from me and really, really do try uh, to, to uh, uh, utilize things like that. Okay, finally, you know, I've been talking about leagues and I'm mindful there's a lot of clubs out there OK, please, please have a look at Moss Bank Junior Football Club. OK, uh, they're a fantastic example of how a club can use social media. Right. They've used it really, really effectively to grow the uh, grow the club, grow the game, benefit the community and its members. Okay? They have a website, they have a Facebook account, a Twitter account, Instagram account. They do podcasts, video messages. They have a Moss Bank TV on youtube that you can go on and they've got a youth council that's currently developing moss bank fm okay uh for radio so 
they're, they're brilliant with social media. They put a lot of it. I noticed Charlotte mentioned video messages and stuff like that. They put a lot of video messages on, which is really good. They have a three to five year old section called the Little Green Dragons. OK, and they even have a mascot for that called uh, Mossy the Dragon. You know, uh, some people think it's uh, it's a man in a car in a, a dragon's uh, cartoon outfit, but Moss Bank has shown me that it's not, and it is a real friendly dragon that helps the little green dragons. But little things like that, it really allows them to engage with those three to five year olds. Yeah, they've now got forty little dragons signed up to the club for the new season, and they've got many more on the waiting list. Okay, they've even got a partnership with another organisation called Wise Up, which is. Uh, w H Y S U P Wise Up. Now, Wise Up uh, uh, look at mental health problem, problems in in adults and young people, and they regularly attend the club with lots of positive mental health messages for their organisation, and they regularly reshare information between themselves be, between both the groups. So it's it's really something uh, to look at. Uh, the club was only formed in two thousand and six. Okay. So it's not a, a, an old club in, in, in long stretch of things with one team, yeah? Now, like I said, they've got 40 Little Dragons signed up for next year. They've got 42 teams across all their age ranges, okay? Uh, they're a really big club now. They even self-manage their own facilities now. Uh, and a lot of this has been driven by the management and the structures and the way that they drive positive messages. So it can have a real, really good positive effect on your organization. They have a tiered structure. We talked about strategic. They have a strategic level that sets the strategy, a senior management team that sets the strategy. OK, they then have nine A's group leads okay that put the tactics in place so when we talked about this three-tiered ap approach they then have a coaches group a youth council and a parents group okay that actually implement the tactics that's been outlined all through social media interaction positive messages and driving excellence through the uh, marketing strategy this has helped grow the club like i said from one team in 2006 and they've now got 550 members okay it's a fantastic tool so just to finish on one thing i'll finish on is going back to the bolton berry district football league i asked our analytics to have a look at uh, the numbers game so just think of this for when you are uh, using social media websites and online presence etc so i said can you do a snapshot pre-pandemic so the 31 days in january they did a snapshot of site visits to our main website which is the bbdfl we had 28,700 visits. That 10,100 were unique visitors. Page views, we had 20,500 page views on our website and 15,600 unique page views. And the average person visited the site for two minutes, 38 seconds. So pre pandemic, you know, most people are on our site, the average time on the site, some longer, but most people were visiting for over two and a half minutes. So you've got to grab them. You've got to have something. So imagery, video, whatever, stories, something to grab them. 10,100 were unique visitors. So think of that about the unique visitors. These are people that's never visited that site before. IP address has never been there before. Okay, how do you grab them? How do you keep them in? OK, if, if you've got boring content, they'll drift away and go elsewhere. I then asked them to do pa a pandemic snapshot. So they've looked at April, the 30 days in April, and we've had 3,500 visitors in that 30 day period and 2,100 were unique. So we're still getting a, a, a high percentage of unique visitors. Out of that, 3,900 page views and 3,000 unique page views, and the visitor rate is 1 minute and 29 seconds. So the visitor rates drops, but that's ex I'd expect that because there's no tables and results and things like that that you would normally have on a league website at that time. So uh, visitor times dropped, but uh, unique visitors still there. So how do you grab them? How do you draw them in? What's your marketing strategy around that? Uh, then I looked at how do they actually visit the site 84% visited by mobile access mobile phone 16% by desktop okay 
So the vast majority of people are drifting to these to our sites, especially uh, using mobile access, and that's these days people are doing things on their phones. So hopefully that's just a little bit of a snapshot, an, an example of how the Bolton Berry District Football League work. Mossback Junior Football Club, please have a look at them and consider how do you actually attract people to your organisation and promote your uh, uh, things that you're doing. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Warren. I think to have that level of honesty about your experiences as well is really just going to be so helpful for everyone tuned in this evening. Some really practical advice. And the question I was asked earlier about how you can maybe disperse the social media management across your club, I think Warren's given a really great example of best practice. And again, how it can be used to build a team and, and build a community at your football club. And finally, from me, I've written some practical tips there. But I just thought quickly based on something that Warren brought up, I'd, I'd like to share an experience with you. I won't name um, the organisation because obviously I haven't got permission, but um, I was approached once by the CEO of a football organisation who was very hands on with their um, Twitter page. And he quite simply had had enough um, of abuse around different things. Like I said, football um, is known for people to share their opinions. And he said, I'm just going to close it down. Um, but I want to get your thoughts. And I completely sympathised with how he was feeling, but I, was, I said to him, do not shut your Twitter page down. Um, it might feel at the moment, you know, sometimes guidance goes out and people don't agree with it, and it was an antagonising sort of week, but the benefit on the long term would be good. And I said, why don't we take a strategic approach? Why don't you write a blog piece for the website explaining how sort of upsetting and damaging this is and, and the role that you serve as a football organisation in terms of making the football a positive environment etc etc and we will share that on our social media channels which we did and it also said as well that we wouldn't accept abuse um, but we managed to do it rather than it be negative we tried to make it positive and we use social media to deliver that message out there so um, again social media can be used to kind of temper um, and, and manage the cons and take negatives and you can manage them into positives um, so yeah, my five practical tips are up there, and I really do hope that everyone tuned in has, has found this webinar useful. The aim, like I said at the start, was to look at the range of social media channels available to you um, and give you guidance on how best to maximise their functionalities and save you some time. So I really hope that you take away the fact that social media is a positive, fun marketing channel. And if you are able to dedicate some hours towards planning, it really can be harnessed to galvanise your club and league development plans. And again, thank you to Warren, because I think he really highlighted the benefit to leagues and clubs across the country. And I'm sure his experiences and tips will have lent you some ideas and inspiration too. So um, that is about everything from me, I think. Brilliant. Thanks, Charlotte. Um... I know that you're, you're, you're comfortable in, uh, in me sharing this slide where your, your contact details are there. Um, obviously, check out Charlotte's Twitter page, LinkedIn. I guess they're all kind of intertwined with some of your platforms that you spoke about. So uh, you may see some similar content across uh, Charlotte's platforms there. But please don't forget to kind of connect with Charlotte, with myself, with people that are on the, on the chat today. Um, just like to say in terms of the chat function, you guys have been absolutely outstanding this evening. There's so many positive, supportive comments and suggested suggestions being flying it flying in left, right and centre. So, um, yeah, great work from you guys this evening. Again, I just want to um, first of all, before I go into this, I just want to say my personal thanks to Warren as well. Really good insight um, from a league's perspective. Those that have been with us for a few webinars, you've seen hopefully that we're trying to mix it up from different levels of the game, female, male, leagues, clubs. So um, it's been really insightful from Warren's perspective. And I think one thing that I really liked about what, what Warren was talking about was his honesty. Um, social media is, is, is fantastic, but it can be as Charlotte gave the example, sometimes a bit of a daunting place. So um, you're not alone when you probably have those moments on a Saturday or a Sunday where um, people are potentially hammering you based on the scores or, or whatever their personal opinion may be. Um, so big thanks to Warren. Again, massive thanks to, to yourself, Charlotte. Um, great information being shared. And again, some fantastic comments that are flooding in the chat now, just kind of thanking you both for your time. 
Um, please do obviously take on board everything that's said this evening. I just want to reiterate one more time that obviously everything you do is in line with the safeguarding um, procedures and guidance that is set out by us here at the Football Association. Um, I, there has been some really positive questions. If anyone has got anything burning, please do let me know. Um, I'm going to be very honest. There's a lot going through the chat that I might miss it. So if there is anything burning, um, please do stay behind at the end and, and unmute yourself. I'm just going to close off the webinar because I appreciate we're a little bit over time. Last final slide from myself. Next week, um, Charlotte will be back with us again. So it's great to have Charlotte on board. Um, support in these series of webinars and we'll be looking at the topic how can marketing support growth and sustain participation um, so please do join us next week all of this content um, from this evening will be shared with you directly along with this information around how you can join us next week it just leaves me to say a huge thank you to you all for your time and effort this evening um, and like I say if anyone does want to stay around to ask any questions please do so Enjoy the west, rest of your week. Stay safe. Um, enjoy the golf courses or the uh, tennis course that we're obviously all allowed to access now. Um, and hopefully we'll see many of you on next week's call. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you for tuning in to the FA Football Forum. If you like this episode and you want any more information, please visit thefa.com forward slash clubs and leagues or email clubsprogram at thefa.com. If you want a monthly dose of this content, be sure to search the Grassroots Football Hub on YouTube or find In The Box on your favourite podcast provider. This is the podcast supporting grassroots clubs and leagues be the best places to play and enjoy the game.